of the top guys in this class. When you're talking inside, there are two guys, and I think both will probably be late first round picks. And one of them is Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma. The other one is Patrick Queen from LSU. Kenneth Murray's probably the top of this class if you're talking about an inside linebacker. Patrick Queen's a guy that did not come along quite as well, but the later that LSU got into their season and then when they got into big moments and win the national championship game, he was all over the place affecting plays. Where are you going to play Isaiah Simmons? To me, Isaiah Simmons is one of those matchup guys off the ball in first, second, and third down defense because here's what you can do with this guy. You can rush him. You clearly can. But he's got length. He's got twitch. He's got flexibility. Now, this is a guy, if I'm a defensive coordinator, this would be my dream to have this guy because he is a matchup answer. You talk about the big tight ends that you're putting on the field now to be able to move out, and they are mismatches with safeties. They're mismatches with most linebackers. This guy can eat them up and also cover that little twitchy back out of the backfield, and then you can still pressure with it. Movable chess pieces now on defense. Understand, this is a matchup game in the National Football League. When you're matching personnel week to week to week and you're setting game plans, the first thing you look for is how coverage-wise can we take away their most dangerous threat? This guy helps you do that. Are there any other guys who might not be that top echelon of player but can still be highly productive at the next level? Josh Uchi from Michigan. He did not play a lot in his career up through about 2019. And then last season saw some more moments on the field and made the best of it when he was. He's had some injury issues. He has rushed the passer outside but he has also played inside. I think if a guy can like him can get healthy and get more reps and snaps under his belt in a developmental thing, I think down the road could be a, a decent pick in this thing. He'll be a guy to be a late second, probably third round pick if I had to guess. Zach Bowen out of Wisconsin is a guy that did rush a lot, has, has, has tremendous production rushing the ball. But when you start to look at him physically, he's 6023, 238 pounds. But what he can do, he's very aware in space. He's got good zone concepts. He can cover. He was their versatile piece. He was their piece that they moved around everywhere in Wisconsin. I like Zach Bowen as a football player. You know, I don't know whether somebody will find a niche for him. I've got him slated skill-wise, probably in the middle or the end of the second round. There's a kid at, at Appalachian State named Akeem Davis Gaither, 6014, 224 pounds. This is a will linebacker to me. This is a guy that will be an open side, off the ball linebacker. And then another guy from West Texas that I've got my eye on, because I call my guys out there in Lubbock and talk about this guy, is Jordan Brooks from Texas Tech. This kid just makes tackles. He's six foot. 240 pounds, but he runs 4.54. This guy was very, very, very productive at Texas Tech. When I'm watching linebackers on tape, the first thing I look at is their GPS because a linebacker has to be able to find the football. Jordan Brooks from Texas Tech can find the ball. A name that we've heard a lot is Chase Young. What is it about him that makes him so impressive? Explosive, physical, gets to the quarterback. He mentioned Mike Vrabel who is the all-time sack leader at Ohio State with 36 sacks. Well, the guy that's number two on that list, Chase Young, 30 and a half sacks, had, what, 16 and a half last year. Huge presence, had to account for him if you're in offense. And he is a guy that can be an instant difference maker in the NFL level. That's why he'll be a top five pick in this draft. The other one that I really like is Kalevon Chason from LSU. And when you talk about physical, powerful, disruptor. This guy will show you that on film. He was a big part of them on defense as to why they won the national championship. He may have a chance to get even better at the next level because he wasn't always used as a pass rusher in this thing. I think that's probably where he's best suited to play, but wherever they put him in experimentally on that defense, he did well. Give me one or two names of guys who maybe showed their capabilities or their versatility then moved themselves up draft boards at the combine. Kalevon Chason, I believe, is still a developing player. He's got tremendous edge quickness. He can still put on strength, but he has got first round talent. He really does. And plus, when you talk to people down there, they just rave about his leadership ability. So this is a guy that I believe is a first round talent. The next guy that, I, that falls into that category is Yatur Gross Matos out of Penn State. He's 6'5", 266 pounds. The guy's got 82 and a quarter 
inch wingspan. He's long, he's athletic. This is where you're going to have to dig a little deeper to me. This guy may not be a first round player, but to me, he's definitely in a top 50, 55 pick because of his athletic ability and what you're going to be able to do with him. A.J. Epinesa from Iowa. Now, he's had his hand on the ground the entire time. He's not a flexible, gumby edge rusher, but he is a power rusher that's got tremendous, tremendous handwork. He's very powerful. He can find the football. Very, very productive football player. He's not a guy you're going to stand up and use as an outside linebacker in a 3-4 and expect him to move and drop in space, but you're going to get a lot of disruption out of this guy across the defensive front. Are there some guys that we may not be hearing a lot about right now but have the potential for some improvement at the next level? Curtis Weaver from Boise State is an interesting prospect. Terrell Lewis from Alabama will be a second-round pick somewhere in there who has been injured quite a bit but is a big physical player that could probably do well at the next level. Jonathan Greenard from Florida, that is one that you should keep your eye on, as well as Daryl Taylor from the University of Tennessee. Both of those guys are, are names that might sneak up on somebody. Bradley Anai out of Utah, you know, a very, 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 very productive player. Another Florida player, Jabari Zuniga, was a very, very accomplished player at the University of Florida. 6033, 264 pounds, ran 464. He's got the requisite athletic skills. The other guy to keep an eye on is Julian Okwara from Notre Dame. Here's a guy, third or fourth round, look for Julian Okwara from Notre Dame. All right, Rhett, here's your last person, a name that you think that Titans fans need to know. DJ Wanham from South Carolina, 6'5", 258, has an enormous wingspan, arms 34 and one eighth inches long. He's a guy that had a really nice combine, and it could be a, a good developmental player in terms of trying to help this Titans defense that I think John Robinson might have a beat on. He would be somebody I would mention. Derek Tuska from North Dakota State. All right, let's look at this guy. We're down around fifth and sixth round now. 6044, 251, ran 479, but you talk about production on the football field. And, and North Dakota State plays really good football in that division. They are an excellent football team. Keep your eye and keep your ears out for that name. Mm -hmm.